This piece is called Plankton Populations, and it's a piece that we did that shows the populations of plankton around the world's oceans. One of the things that was important for me as the interaction designer on the piece was to find a way to make this giant screen something that works in the context of the Exploratorium. So we first started with size. We wanted it to be large enough that we could have a social experience around the table so that visitors could gather around the table from different angles and talk to each other about what they were seeing. And what we're looking for at the Exploratorium is a more hands-on exploratory experience. My lab collaborated with the Exploratorium to create this plankton exhibit. We spent a while looking for suitable data sources and the data set we settled on was called the Darwin Project at MIT. They have a model of how plankton grow and survive in all the world's oceans. And they've simulated this on supercomputers with data sources from NASA and with satellite imagery and other climate supercomputer models. You put this lens object on the table and it shows you what a microscopic view of a drop of water from that location would look like. So it's an alternate visual representation of the data. Plankton produce half the oxygen we breathe and absorb more carbon dioxide than all the rainforests on Earth. So plankton, while they might be really small, because they fill the entire ocean, they have a huge impact on our atmosphere. We made this exhibit here at the Exploratorium to help people see that the oceans are full of plankton and let them explore the different types that live in different places. You can think of plankton as just one big group, but there are actually like millions and millions of different kinds, from the tiniest viruses and bacteria all the way up to big, beautiful, glassy forms. And this exhibit shows not only that every drop of the ocean is filled with these microscopic creatures, it also shows that there's sort of a pattern. There are different kinds of plankton living in different places. And as you move these rings around on the table, you can see what kind of plankton inhabit the ocean at that location. If you want to know more about the types of plankton that are swimming around within the lens, you can open up this guide, and the guide tells you more information about the plankton at that location. So what we see here are four main population groups of plankton. Purple are diatoms, blue are dinoflagellates, the green are prochlorococcus, and the orange are synecococcus. You can also see that there's a timeline here that's showing time passing. So this model shows the plankton populations as they change over time through seasons. You can always see the plankton kind of moving around slowly. Plankton are by definition drifters. They move where the ocean currents take them. We're a place where we don't necessarily tell someone what to think or tell them what to learn. We leave it very open for them to make their own observations, ask their own questions. So what we did is we took a real scientific tool, which was this model, and we did a lot of educational research and prototyping and design so that you know a seven-year-old or a 67-year-old could come and actually use the same model that a scientist used to make their own discoveries. 